Almut Grunewald uh, wrote a uh, dissertation on Freddy Kiesel on his uh, uh, sculptural work. And as she um, uh, also works at the uh, archive at the ETH of the architectural department, where she is, uh, among others, responsible for the state of um, um, the, the Siam and uh, the um, uh, Secret and um, Gideon. Um, she is um, uh, a perfect match for our uh, panel when it comes to those dialogues. Uh, and I'm looking very much forward to um, uh, her, her speech on uh, Freddy Kiesel's response to Secret Gideon and the Sixth Seal Congress. Thank you very much. by, among other things, a text by Kiesler, slightly differing, not just, yeah, slightly differing versions of which can be found in the two archives, as original type of scripts in duplicate. The Kiesler Foundation's version dates from 1947, shortly before the one in Zurich. Kiesler changed the title from Kunst und Architektur vereint in Vienna to mention und Menschenkunst und Architektur, ein Manifest des Korealismus in Zurich. This title naturally sets all the bells ringing among Gideon scholars, as it uh, obviously alludes to one of Siegfried Gideon's major works, namely this, his book, Space, Time and Architecture, which had been published six years earlier in 1941. How did this unpublished text by Kiesler come about? What, connections is, what connection is there with Kiesler's other Korealist text? And how does it relate to the Gideon and the themes addressed by Siam, the Congrès International de Architecture Moderne, in the 1940s? Kiesler and Gideon became acquainted in the mid-1920s. Presumably at the Exposition Internationale des Arts Décoratifs et Industriels Modernes in Paris in 1925, at which Kiesler exhibited the city in space, and Gideon established his first contact with Le Corbusier. After this, however, Kiesler and Gideon didn't go on to develop a close personal relationship, and interestingly enough, Kiesler was not a member of SIAM. Although Richard Neutra proposed him for membership in a letter to Gideon as early as December 1928. Gideon's time in the USA and his teaching as Elliot Norton professor at Harvard from autumn 1938 must have led to further personal meetings between the two men. On May 12, 1939, following the opening ceremony of the new MoMA building, an event entitled Symposium on Contemporary Architecture was held at New York's University's Institute of Fine Arts under the moderation of MoMA curator James Johnson Sweeney. The event was apparently inspired by Siegfried Gideon, who contributed his lecture American Architecture Viewed from Europe. The participants included George Howe, Richard Buckminster Fuller, John D. Burkhardt, Alva Alto, Sven Markelius, and also Frederick Kiesler. In an informal meeting the next day, Gideon pursued his goal of founding an American branch of SIAM. On May 20, 1944, Kiesler's signature finally appeared on the list of participants at the founding meeting of the CM chapter for relief and post-war planning at the School of Social Research in New York. 
man sieht ihn hier noch recht schon als anderen Marcel Breuer. Kiesler had clearly been fundamentally interested in the issues addressed by and the goals of Siam since the late 1930s. Frederick Kiesler's idea of genre spanning open artistic work developed in the 1940s in the shape of his first sculptures and his spatial exhibition design at Peggy Guggenheim's Art of the Century in 1942 and the Exposition Internationale du Surrealisme at the Mac Gallery in Paris in 1947. The basis for Kiesler's artistic position is a new conception of space, combined with the softening of the genre boundaries between architecture and art. Kiesler arrived in Paris on May 27, 47, uh, 1947 to prepare the exhibition at the Gallery Mac. This opened on July 7, and Kiesler subsequently remained in Europe until September 20. On her way to Cornwall in August 1947, Siegfried Gideon's wife, Carola Gideon Welker, visited the season's exhibition in Paris. Taking the advice of Hans Arp, she went to the Galerie where she was personally guided through the exhibition by Kiesler. In a letter to her husband, she describes Kiesler's work in Paris and, although she finds him vain and bitter, she advises Gideon to win Kiesler over to Siam's goals. Quote, Mit Kiesler in Flor, der sich von dir vernachlässigt fühlt und mir einen hinteren Eingang zu der verschlossenen Surrealistenausstellung verschaffte. Die architektonische Idee, die psychologische Architektur, die Kiesler realisierte, ist sehr interessant und in einem gewollt organischen Sinne ausgeführt. Den Konstruktivisten Kiesler fühlt man noch an hängenden, mit Schnüren bespannten Partien, La Salle de Superstition mit großen weißen Gipsfetischen ist gut, die kleinen an Schneckenhäusern des Panoptikums erinnernde Nischen und magischen Objets sind interessant als Materialfantasie, kommen aber nicht darüber hinaus, wie Mirko und Arp es tun. Kiesler erklärte mir, er ist die es ist die Revolte gegen die hygienische Architektur, die er macht. Er sei kein Surrealist. Kann man ihn nicht für Ziehern brauchen? Wohnt Hotel Litesia Bulbaras Pai. Er scheint eitel und verbittert, aber nicht uninteressant und im gewissen Sinne auf unserer Linie. In his function as Secretary General of the Congresses of Modern Architecture, Siegfried Gideon had put the subject of the synthesis of the arts on the agenda of the sixth uh, Siam Congress. The aims of the first post-war Congress in Bridgewater, England, were to pick up where the 1930s had left off and to formulate new, up-to-date themes. Various proposals came from the delegates. Since no agreement was reached on the single theme, it was decided to discuss a range of issues including reconstruction, architectural expression, and architectural education. Gideon's preferred subject was the relationship between architecture and the arts, on which he presented a questionnaire together with Hans Arp, entitled Relation between Architect, Paint, and Sculpture. The subject was taken up again in the Wagon Congress in 1949. Although Hans Arp and Siegfried Gideon had already been working on the questionnaire for about a year, Arp did not attend the Congress. A month before it was due to take place, Gideon sends him a, a reminder and urges him to come to England without fail. Quote, Da ich annahm, sie würden ohne ihn nach England kommen, meldete ich sie für den Kongress in Bridgewater an. Wahrscheinlich wird auch Henry Moore, vielleicht Leger, erscheinen. Von Amerika werden Gropius, Sert und einige andere erscheinen. Von ihnen möchte ich ein kleines Sprüchlein, vollkommen offen, was sie über Architektur und über die Umstände einer möglichen Zusammenarbeit denken. Also ich rechne auf sie. Art replies a few days later, declining to attend the Congress and instead of responding to the questionnaire, he sends Gideon his text on Kiesler's Seite Superstition which he believes contains the answer. Quote, Als Sie mich seinerzeit baten, auf Ihren Fragebogen zu antworten, fand ich keine rechten Antworten. 
Durch den von Kiesler gestalteten Raum in der Surrealistenausstellung wurde mir die Zusammenarbeit von Architekten, Malern und Plastikern völlig klar. Ich habe in einem Aufsatz über Kiesler in der einzigen Art, wie mir dies lebendig möglich ist, auch diese Frage beantwortet. Er wird in französischer Sprache in Paris erscheinen. Ich füge Ihnen in diesem Brief die Originalfassung bei und würde mich freuen, wenn sie am Kongress deutsch oder in englischer Übersetzung vorgelesen würde oder wenn sie Ihnen lieber Video zur Veröffentlichung dienen könnte. Art's refusal and Carola Gideon Welker's letter reached Gideon almost simultaneously at the end of August. But it was not until September 10, three days into the week-long Siam Congress, that Gideon sent another telegram with an invitation to Kiesler in Paris. It appears, however, that Kiesler didn't take this up, and there's no evidence that the text by Hans Arp entitled as Heil Kiesler's on seine Seite des Superstition was circulated or even read aloud in Bridgewater. <coughs> in the introduction to his aesthetic questionnaire, Siegfried Gideon remarks that the relationship with the arts has changed in comparison with other periods. It seems obvious to Gideon that an altered relationship must also lead to different forms of expression and new artistic media. Somewhat embarrassed, however, he admits that the practical application is still largely unclear. The first item to, of the questionnaire deals with the basic question, quote, what do you consider to be the function of art, painting and sculpture in the design of a building? Is its role a mere decorative one? Well, yes, why, and no, why? Do you believe that a work of art should express and emphasize symbolically the content of the building? Questions two and three deal with the apparently desirable, de desirable simultaneous collaboration of architect, sculptor and painter. But this was still considered difficult as expressed in question four, quote, 4a. Should the architect, painter and sculptor cooperate from the very beginning so as to strengthen the spiritual and emotional conception of the architecture? If so, what do you propose to overcome the obvious difficulties resulting from the present-day specialist conception of the three categories? <laughs> Question 4a was actually answered by 4b. Anyone, which probably meant the architect, was to take the lead in the collaboration, because the alternative would be to bring in the sculptors and painters only after the project was completed. Quote, as has been the custom since the de degeneration of architecture in the 19th century. Question 5 opened up the possibility of categorizing the type of cooperating of cooperation according to the building task. The categories were housing, public buildings and buildings for special purposes, and town planning in general and layout of community and civic centers. It seems as, as if a weighting of these buildings, building tasks was to be carried out here, which went strongly in the direction of Gideon's ideas of a new monumentality in the area of community buildings. The remaining questions were devoted to the significance of color and form in architecture and the relationship of painting and sculpture with the wall. It is striking that there was no attempt to create a vision of a democratic or almost equal cooperation between architects, painters and sculptors. The questionnaire was clearly put together from the architect's perspective. Hence, its aim was to use art as means of serving architecture and supporting architectural expression. An independent dialogue between architects and artists working with the maximum possible mutual freedom was obviously out of the question. The artistic possibilities of and the trend towards addressing architecture and space that could already be found in contemporary painting and sculpture were not discussed at all. <coughs> 
Frederick really Kiesler's design of the Salle des Superstitions in the Surrealist exhibition in the Gallery Light, and his text in the exhibition catalog, L'Architecture Magique de la Salle de la Salle des Superstitions, strongly echoed the content of his Manifest du Pluralisme, which was also formulated in 1947. The manifesto's subtitle, Les Etats-Unis de la Plastique, underlined its central theme, the reproachment amongst or even unification of the arts. The strong similarities between the Manifest du Pluralisme and the type of script mentioned Kunst und Architektur suggest that they emerged in parallel. The wording of individual passages is almost identical and they are very similarly structured. There is a strong correspondence between the contents of the two texts, although the manifesto has just 23 pages and the type is good 166. The translation of the Manifesto Coralisme into French allowed the text to be not only carefully revised but also more sharply formulated. In contrast, the title script of Menschenkunst und Architektur remains a collection of raw material. The correspondence between Kiesler and Arp confirms that Kiesler indeed work, uh, did indeed work on both texts simultaneously and also proves that he forwarded them to Arp. Due to its design and the addition of illustrations, the Manifesto Pluralisme becomes a presentation of Kiesler's realized projects, from ideas of the Endless House and the Space House by the Mobile Home Library, Blood Flames and Art of the Century to La Salle de Superstition. In the type of script mentioned on some architecture, Kiesler attempts to formulate a more theoretical examination of design issues. The first and second parts of mentioned constant architecture are dominated by the theme of functionalism. This reminds us of the text Coralism and Biotechnique from 1939, and yet no, no text passages from this earlier work were incorporated into mentioned constant architecture. Noteworthy, however, is the way in which Kiesler turns more strongly to the relationship between, between the arts as he attempts to integrate art and artistic design into his theories of coalism and biotechnique. In the 18 pages devoted to creation mutation or the Gesetz der kreativen Umwandlung, which he also descri described in the Manifesto Pluralisme, Kiesler introduces a method of constantly checking needs and functions. This method involves a cycle that progresses from a constant materialism to a new idea and on to a new object. Quote, Tatsächlich wird der wahre Funktionalist keinen Standard als endgültig annehmen. Er lebt den existierenden Standard durch, um aus solcher Erfahrung vom Standard selbst unabhängig zu werden. Dann aus diesem konstanten Materialismus eins heraus und mit Hilfe der auf diese Weise befreiten Vorstellungskraft kristallisiert er die neue Idee 2 und das neue Objekt 3. Nicht nur beherrscht er so allmählich die Umstände, unter denen sein neues Objekt geboren werden muss, sondern er ändert durch diese neuen wirklichen Objekte die Umstände selbst. In Menschen, Kunst und Architektur, Kiesler even offers practical instructions for the coalistic linking of art and architecture. These are based on a cooperative design method with alternating correlators. Quote, Der Architekt zeichnet nicht mehr selbst das Haus, er ist Korrelator. Es wird kollektiv gezeichnet, Gruppe von Spezialisten der Konstruktion, der mechanisierten Ausstattung und der Dekoration und kollektiv gebaut und verwaltet. Kiesler sent the completed text to Arp in February 1948 and asked him to press for its publication in Switzerland. Particularly interesting is Kiesler's hint at the end of the letter that Arp should on no account show the text to the Gideons before its publication. With the illusion of the title to Gideon's space, time and architecture, Kiesler makes his position quite clear. 
His approach differs from Gideon's with regard to the collaboration between architect and artist. Kiesler criticizes Sion and Gideon's position in general. This can be seen in some of the critical sideswipes within the text. In the second part, for example, Kiesler includes the subchapter bath or bathroom, which presumably refers to Gideon's recent article, The Mechanization of the Bath, which was published in the Architectural Record in October 1947, and forms a whole chapter in his 1948 book, Mechanization Text Command. He is the criticizes the inhibiting impact of the historian, that is Gideon, on the exploration of practical solutions. Quote, Immer wieder muss ich die historische und ökonomische Theorie als Hauptmethode zur Lösung zeitgemäßer Architekturprobleme zurückstellen. Die Aufgaben sind zu schwer, um bereits am Beginn der Arbeit gehemmt zu werden. Gehemmt durch die Philosophie der Historiker, die nicht Wissenschaft sind. Vor allem anderen muss es die experimentelle Methode sein, durch die wir uns selbst erkennen müssen. At another point, Kiesler criticizes pure functionalism while also poss possibly referring to Gideon's book, The Freites Wohnen, which was published in 1929. Quote, Sie sprechen alle von Funktionalismus, aber haben vergessen, die Welt der latenten Funktionen zu definieren, das heißt, die Gültigkeit existierender Funktionen zu prüfen, neue Funktionen zu finden, überalte zu eliminieren, mit mehr Glas, Licht, Blumen am Boden statt auf Fensterbrettern und einer Kombination Wohn- und Speisezimmer ist es nicht getan. Sie wollen aus Pseudofunktionen neue Architektur machen, sichern aber in Wahrheit nur das Bankkonto ihrer professionellen Aura. Kiesler also takes a hard line with Gideon's publication The Need for a New Monumentality from 1944. Quote, wenn wir von Architektur sprechen und damit den Begriff der Monumentalität verbinden, dann sind wir im religiösen oder politischen Stecken geblieben. In 1948, Hans Arp again addressed Kiesler's typescript mentioned Kunst und Architektur in a letter, but without giving him too much hope regarding publication. Kiesler then seems to have used other contacts, such as those with the Zurich-based art historian and theatre director Hans Kuriel, in, uh, in order to push for a German language publication for the text. In a letter written to Kiesler in 1950, Kuil, an old student friend of the Gideons from Munich, offered to pass the typescript on to Hans Giersberger, another very good friend of the Gideons, who was also a publisher. It is this text that now forms part of the Hans Giersberger estate in the GTA archives at ETH Zurich. In the light of his art historical training and the theoretical work that he had developed by the 1940s, it is surprising that it was the end um, of that decade before the Tragedian formulated the idea of the synthesis of the arts. After all, he had already established a connection between architecture and art back in 1928 in Bauen in Frankreich on an Eisenbahn and Eisenbeton in which he described a new architectural perception that he traced back to innovations in painting. By suggesting that art had trained the eyes of architects and enabled them to create modern architecture, Gideon put architecture in a position of dependency upon art and even implied the dominance of art with the developed, uh, development process as he saw it. But given the fact that Gideon regarded a change in perception and a change in the way space is dealt with as central to both modern art and modern architecture, it is even more surprising that he failed at the same time to recognize the associated expansion of artistic space, an expansion that must inevitably intensify the intertwining of architecture. Already uh, had realized in a spectacular fashion in 1942 at Peggy Guggenheim's Art of the Century Gallery. In his idea of spatial design, the division into artistic genres becomes irrelevant. 
Gideon, however, never went this far. He hinted at a change which he described in the first questionnaire of 1946 as a change relationship to the arts and advocated close cooperations between architect and artist. But he didn't question the long established boundaries between and the roles of architecture and art. Architect and artist. It was not until the German edition of Space Time and Architecture, which was published in 1964 with the new newly added paragraph der gegenwärtige Bestand der Architektur, the current state of architecture, that Gideon approached a freer spatial conception of art. Here, as in the 1940-1956 book Architektur und Gemeinschaft, Architecture, You and Me, he primarily took the opportunity to propagate the works of Le Corbusier, who embodies the artist and architect in personal union. Barbara Hepworth's appeal for the uh, involvement of artists from the very start of the building process, which dated back to the, to the Bridgewater Congress, was printed in the same book, but only as a means of introducing Le Corbusier. For both Frederick Kiesler and Siegfried Gideon, the exploration of a new conception of space reflects the search for a unifying element between the arts. Gideon does this in pursuit of a romantic notion and a longing for cultural unity. Kiesler, on the other hand, is driven by a vision of universal structure, of spatial relationships and an equal coexistence of art and architecture that stands for constant renewal and a dynamic process in the form of co -realism. Thank you.